the U.S. government recently received a policy proposal on chips. The report was written by two people. One is Graham Allison. You may not be familiar with this name, but you must have heard of the Thucydides trap. Allison is the creator of the theory. In 2010, he came to a conclusion that almost subverted the relationship between China and the United States. A rising power will inevitably challenge the status of an existing power, and the existing power will inevitably take measures to contain and suppress it. Therefore, there will be conflicts and even wars between the two. Therefore, there must be a war between China and the United States. After Thucydides' trap theory was put forward, it caused a huge sensation among the American elite. And that year happened to coincide with the peak of China's manufacturing output value, and the sense of anxiety and crisis pervaded the entire American society. Another author of the CHIP report is Eric Schmidt, the former chairman of Google. He also has another identity, the founder of the American think tank China Strategy Group CSG. As the name suggests, the think tank is dedicated to China. In 2021, just a few days after Biden took office, Eric Schmidt led his CSG to submit a 33-page strategic report of nearly 100,000 words to the White House to deal with China's technological competition. In the report, he quoted former U.S. Secretary of Defense Robert Work as warning, we're 110 miles, the distance from Taipei to the mainland away from going from two generations ahead to maybe two generations behind. It has been five years since the Sino-U.S. technology war started. The United States seems to be in the upper hand, but this report has instantly awakened many Americans who are still sleeping. It turns out that the United States has been deceived by China for five years. Why is that? How can China's semiconductor industry, which has been under the sanctions of the United States for a long time, make a breakthrough in a short period of time? Hi. Welcome to Tech Teller. Before we start today's video, please subscribe to our channel. Okay, let's move on to today's topic. In the report, a set of data shows the urgency and severity of solving the problem, from 1990 to 2020. China built 32 super factories for chip production, while the factories in other parts of the world combined only had 24. If the US government does not make further adjustments, mainland China will become the world's largest chip manufacturer as early as 2025. In addition to this, the plan also shows strong concerns about China's influence in the semiconductor supply chain. In the field of upstream raw materials, China produces 70% of the world's silicon, 80% of tungsten and 97% of gallium, in the downstream packaging field, China supplies more than half of the world's circuit boards. American think tanks are particularly worried that China's chip development will replicate the manufacturing path of the past, that is, through the combination of cluster layout in various parts and components and a huge consumer market, China will firmly control the dominance of the international supply chain. After talking about how much progress China's chip manufacturing industry has made and how urgent the crisis facing the United States is, Graham Allison and Eric Schmidt finally gave three practical countermeasures. The first two countermeasures are relatively cliched, but the real big move is the third one. The suggestion clearly points out that there is no need for the White House to force TSMC to shift production lines with a process below 7 nanometers. Instead, it should vigorously develop the chips of mature process. Schmidt deserves to be a top practitioner who once led two ICT giants, Apple and Google, and this policy suggestion is enough to demonstrate his precise strategic vision. After the White House's ban on Huawei came into effect, the vast majority of people believed that the Sino-US technological war centered on semiconductors would be in the advanced process field below 7 nanometers. But in fact, the chip battlefield below 7 nanometers is only an important battlefield, not a decisive battlefield. The reasons are as follows. First, Moore's law has reached its limit. In 2016, Gordon Moore, the founder of Moore's law, said that it is becoming more and more difficult to continue to push down to new manufacturing nodes. A year later, Jenhun Huang, CEO of NVIDIA, the world's top semiconductor manufacturer, admitted that Moore's law has come to an end, because designers can no longer create a GPU architecture that can achieve higher instruction set parallelism. Transistor count increases by 50% per year, but CPU performance only increases by 10% per year. 
TSMC, which is at the forefront of chip manufacturing, is the best example. Since TSMC broke through the 14 nanometers process chip, the R&D team found that the time consuming for each new process is often several times that of the previous one. It is predicted that under the existing technical environment, one nanometer will be the limit of the chip manufacturing process. Now the manufacturing process of commercial chips has reached 3 nanometers, and the manufacturing process of chips in the research and development stage has reached 2 nanometers, which means that there are at most 10 years before traditional semiconductor chips can go any further. In the chip race between China and the United States, China used to be running and the United States was also running. It must be very difficult to catch up. But if the United States can't run anymore and China is still running, then the speed of catching up will only become faster and faster. In other words, unless the United States can set off a new technological revolution in a short period of time, China will surely be able to successfully break out of its blockade. Therefore, it is not China that should really worry, but the United States. Since the status quo cannot be changed, there is no strategic significance in working hard on the manufacturing capabilities of advanced process chips. Second, the market share of advanced process chips is very small. According to the 2021 report of the China Semiconductor Industry Association, the market share of advanced process chips below 7 nanometers is only 2% while semiconductor chips with processes of 14 nanometers and above 14 nanometers account for 70%, and chips in this range can basically be commercially mass-produced in China. Besides, in TSMC's first quarter 2022 financial report, 14 nanometers and above process revenue accounted for 60%. Third, the downstream market for chips with advanced processes is shrinking, while the downstream market for chips with processes above 14 nanometers is expanding rapidly. High-end chips below 7 nanometers are mainly used in consumer electronics, such as smartphones and tablets. From the first negative growth calculation in 2018, global smartphone shipments have shrunk for four consecutive years. Smartphones are the largest terminal application provider of high-end chips, and its sales decline will inevitably lead to a shrinking demand for chips. In recent years, many mobile phone manufacturers such as Apple, Xiaomi, and Huawei have turned to the field of electric vehicles, precisely because the smartphone market has become saturated. Chips with a 14 nanometers and above process are mostly used in new energy vehicles. And China is the well-deserved king in this field. In short, the advanced process chips have never been China's main force, but a faint force to attract the attention of the United States. China's real main force is the backward chips with a process of more than 14 nanometers. It will use China's advantages in the entire industrial chain and export advantages in the field of new energy vehicles to drive the rapid expansion of the market territory of China's semiconductor manufacturing industry. After gaining a monopoly advantage, it will launch an attack on the high end chip positions dominated by the United States. Five years have passed. The United States finally realized that it had been deceived, so it hurriedly mobilized its troops back to defense, but it was too late now. Well, thanks for listening. Please put your comments below, and share your insightful ideas. I am Tech Teller, the person to tell you the opinions that are worth spreading every day. See you.